What's going on friends, Sam Pratt is back once again and just over here we have the new Anycubic Cobra 3 which is a four colour or four multi-material iFree style 3D printer. Now I've been working with Anycubic since the Anycubic Viper came out so maybe three, maybe even nearly four years but we've been using this machine to make some really cool models but there are a couple of things that make this uh, possibly a kind of deficient printer and well we're going to be talking a bit about that later on. So let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. So having worked with Anycubic for a number of years and then meeting them for the first time when I was first in China and then more recently again at Rapid TCT, I've gained more of a knowledge of the direction that Anycubic are now looking to move forward with. At the most recent Rapid TCT in LA, I did meet up with the team and I did also meet up with their co-founder. Now they were touting their brand new Cobra Free combo and it did look fairly exciting. Now, the range up until this point in time had really become a little bit lackluster and so much so that when they sent me the Cobra 2 and the Cobra 2 Plus and the Max, well, they didn't actually get published on the channel as I felt that the viewership wouldn't really be worth filming and the editing time. Although some of the videos were shot at the time, well, the firmware was just unfinished and the printer just ended up idle. So when it came to unboxing the Cobra 3, I was actually pretty surprised to find that seemingly the build quality had surpassed the usual design shortcomings. And while we have seen the metal wheels on the Cobra 2, aesthetically speaking, the Cobra 3 just has new clothes. The revamped image does seem to be a change of pace, which I think is great. Nice one, Anycubic. 10 points. As I was putting this 3D printer to the test, I realised something. There's only one thing that can make any project even cooler. And of course, while 3D printing is awesome, do you know what makes it even cooler? Well, custom PCBs. Imagine combining your 3D printed creations with some high quality custom made circuit boards. That's where PCB Way comes in. They make it super easy to design and order PCBs that can turn your 3D print into fully functional gadgets. Plus, they're super affordable so you can experiment without breaking the bank. Check out the links below for this sweet deal and thanks to PCB Way. Then we have the AMS system which is called the Ace Pro that not only provides four filament feeders but also can act as a filament dryer. This solution has really been long awaited and does make total sense to have on board. And if you've been keeping up with some companies, well, they've tried to integrate this already and sadly have failed. While talking to James at Rapid, we did talk about the usual Anycubic strategy of releasing a small, medium and large 3D printer and then also having four to eight color combinations. And while there is no dates in mind, James did confirm that they are working on future releases and accidentally informed me of something that they had printed, confirming that the Anycubic XL will be coming soon. So let's look at the Cobra 3 specs and also explore some of the pros and cons to using this machine. The Cobra 3 packs more than your average bed slinger. It comes with some intriguing enhancements. Take, for example, the bed size, which is now 250 by 250 by 260, which gives you a little bit of extra room for your projects. It also comes with smart color printing and you've got options ranging from four to eight colors with the second add-on currently in the works with future integration. Its maximum speed, well, that's 600 millimeters per second, which feels pretty standard these days. And while the hot end can reach 300 degrees, plus the usual features that you'd expect are all here, all metal hot end, PEI bed, auto bed leveling, a bed temperature that can max out 110 degrees, and even a USB port for your files and your camera. Everything you need right at your fingertips. Intriguing enhancements. Wait, what? Yep, I get it. Intriguing enhancements might be a little bit strong here. However, it can be reflected away from the printer itself. The Ace Pro, for example, is the first multicolor system to integrate a filament dryer. And why have they succeeded when others failed? The Ace unit is actually something that I do prefer over the Bamboo Lab A1. There you go, I said it. Uh, addressing the elephant in the room. And of course, when I say elephant, I don't mean me. But the truth here is the Cobra 3 does pose a striking resemblance to the A1. And I do believe this is a good thing as we're starting to see a change of pace here with releases from manufacturers offering multicolor machines. Which really brings me on to one of the biggest annoyances with the Cobra 3. This isn't just a multicolor machine. It's a snot chucking rocket. This thing has a magnet actually on the end of basically where the nozzle comes and actually wipes it and it chucks it across the room. It's enormously powerful and it just brings all these tiny little bits. Now, this isn't something that's just happened. We've seen it before. We've seen it with other manufacturers, especially with Bamboo Lab. And actually, it's one of the biggest problems with those machines is the amount of waste that you generate. 
that can't be easily recyclable at this particular point in time is a real challenge and a real problem. And really, this isn't really innovative enough to make any changes to that. And while you can, in the slicer, dial down the amount of waste that you're using, it still isn't enough. In fact, and not to get too tree huggy on you here, but in some of the test files, it actually generated more waste in weight than the model actually weighed, which simply doesn't make it cost effective as we all first thought. Terry, get the vacuum cleaner out. We've got hundreds of little bits in here. Not to keep hamming on about this, but this print took maybe two or three days to print in its entirety. Well, this one only took just a few hours and the quality differences between the two are, well, seismic. This Robo Tortoise by Matt Mir Makes took an unprecedented amount of time and the slicer, of course, didn't account for additional time it takes to purge and change the filament, which totaled in this case 928 times. So let's say, for example, that each purge took 60 seconds before printing. Well, that would actually add another 15 and a half hours to the print. And that's if the feedback detector didn't keep cutting out to say that there was a problem. That purging means that the multicolor print versus a single color print certainly has some quality issues certainly in my case anyway. Furthermore, and for a large amount of time, I've actually been having to mess with the Z offset pretty consistently for the filament to stick to the bed. It feels a bit like the old days when you had to sit and watch the printer for the first layer. Well, it does seem to have fixed itself over the past few days, despite me not changing anything. Weird. Finally. Look at that. So what about the single print quality? And I think this is really where the machine comes into its own. And to be honest with you, if you don't go for the combo unit right now, you could do that later on down the line. So if you are looking for a really decent single color printer that kind of has all the bells and whistles for a pretty low price, then well, this could be the one for you. On the model and print side, I have been using STL Flix's platform to print various test models and in that single color format. And I feel really that's where the Cobra 3 comes into its own. And the challenge around multicolor printing feels, well, a little bit too complicated, especially when the quality and filament wastage is affected. Having said that, and overall, I do believe that this is a good step forward for any cubic they were quick to follow up and compete in the multicolor 3D printing market. And I think with some tweaks to the firmware and the slicer, this unit will give users many glorious hours of 3D printing. Some areas of focus that I found to be stunning and is very unique in the way that the filament is fed out of the box and to the hot end, which is what you don't see unless you're actually looking at it at the rear of the Ace Pro. I did notice that the acceleration also seems to be reduced over previous models, and this isn't something that they're mentioning in the specification online. But overall, this is a great budget-friendly printer at £309, for the standard or £399 for the combo. And let's be honest, you'll buy the combo at that overall discount. So just to sum this all up, for single colours, I think this is absolutely brilliant. And I don't think you can go wrong for the for the amount of money that ultimately you're going to be paying for it. Now, of course, like I said, if you're going to be buying it, you're going to probably be buying it with the combo because even just for a normal filament dry box, you'd be paying more money than that standard anyway. So it is definitely cost effective, even if you're using it for those two different purposes. Now, the other thing is, I do believe that over a small amount of time, you are going to see iterations to the firmware and also the slicing software which should just make this whole thing much much better and i imagine there's going to be some very clever people out there that are going to be able to somehow deal with this waste issue because at the moment it's catatonic and um i don't really want to print multicolor while i'm wasting so much filament but anyway if you're thinking about buying this machine and i think you should do links of course for everything will be down in the description below as per usual um let me know what you think about this thing as well don't forget to hit that subscribe button we will see you guys next time bye for now you are watching a master at work.